Welcome. This video is going to look at the ideal gas law. So this is just one more gas law, and it finally takes into account that fourth variable that we've been ignoring, which is moles or the number of gas particles. So we're finally going to look at situations when your sample of gas actually does change. You let some gas out of your container. Your balloon has a leak in it. Your tire has a slow leak. So gases whose particles take up no space and have no intermolecular interactions, regardless of the pressure and temperature of the gas, are considered to be ideal gases. Now, of course, there's no such thing as an ideal gas. That's why it's called ideal. is because all gas particles have some volume and some intermolecular forces. But most of the time, neither of these is noticeable. The space between the particles is so huge that neither the size of the particle matters or is noticeable, and the intermolecular forces between them isn't strong enough to have any effect. So usually, real gases behave very close to what the ideal gas law predicts. Except there's two extreme conditions that are going to make, I, are going to make any gas not behave ideally. If you have really high pressure or really low temperature, think about it. Really high pressure, really low temperature, Either of those conditions is going to make your particles much, much closer together. And when your particles get closer together, the intermolecular forces can start to have an effect. And the size of the particles is going to be noticeable because now the space between is not so ginormous. There's also two types of molecules that will tend to um, make gases behave less ideally. If you have very polar molecules, it's going to increase the intermolecular forces to the point they have an effect. Or if you have very large molecules, then the volume could become an issue. So typically, gases behave very much like the ideal gas law will predict, except for these extreme conditions or these extreme type of molecules. So how does the ideal gas law predict that gases will behave? Well, it's really just the combined gas law. But as I said, now we have the fourth variable in there. So besides pressure, volume, and temperature, we also have the number of gas particles or moles. And an increase in the amount of gas or a decrease in the amount of the gas is going to change at least one of the other three variables. So if you put more gas into a balloon, either the temperature, pressure, or volume has to change, or possibly all three. So we could do a lot of fancy math to show you how they came up with this ideal gas law. Or you can just trust me. Feel free to look at it if you want. But the law they've come up with, or the equation they've come up with, is that PV equals NRT. And we have two new terms here, where N is the number of moles, and R is something called the gas constant. And that's because we could really have P1 times V1 over N1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over N2 over T2. But instead, they've taken that second set of conditions, P2, V2, N2, T2, and they've changed that into what we call the gas constant. So the gas constant is a freebie. You just get to look it up. So you're really just dealing with the four variables, pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles. The R value depends on the pressure being used. It's always assumed that your volume is in liters, your temperature is in Kelvin, and your moles are in moles. And so only pressure is allowed to vary, and that's just because there's so many different instruments used to measure pressure, and it might be in PSI, or it might be in atmospheres, or if you're uh, in a European nation, they tend to use pascals and kilopascals, but you also see tors and millimeters of mercury. So our value depends on the unit used for pressure. If it's atmospheres, which most of ours will be, then ours could be 0.0821, and it's got a funky unit, liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. And that's because um, three of the four units are going to cancel out, and your final answer is either going to be in liters if it's volume, in this case atmospheres if it's pressure, or Kelvin if it's temperature. So let's look at an example. Determine the Kelvin temperature required for five moles of gas, that's our new variable N, at STP, to fill a weather balloon to 150 liters under 0.988 atmospheres of pressure. So it's at STP, which really doesn't matter because these are the conditions we want. We want this volume and we want this pressure. And I don't even need the one there. I'm going to cross it off so it doesn't. 
I want this volume and this pressure. So 5 moles PV equals NRT. I have my P, 0.988. I have my V, 150. I have N, 5.00. I can look R up, 0 0.0821. And I'm trying to find T. So I simply have to divide by the 5 times 0 0.0821 to get T alone. And if I go ahead and solve for T, I come up with a temperature of 361, and remember that's Kelvin. And since it only asks for the Kelvin temperature, I don't need to change this back. If I want to change it back to Celsius, I just subtract the 273. A couple other things we can calculate. Because PV equals NRT, we could also calculate both density and molar mass, because we can rearrange this equation twice. Remember, N is moles. But moles is really your mass of your sample, your grams, divided by your moles per gram, is going to be your moles. So we really could, instead of N, we could put PV equals little m RT over big M. And I just remember that big M is the molar mass because it's the one that doesn't change. That's why it gets the capital letter. Little m is the one that can change, so it's not as important. Or we could also substitute in density, since density is mass over volume, and we have both mass and volume in our equation. So the density equation is usually rewritten as m equals drt over p. And um, when you're looking for the molar mass, it's written as pv equals little mrt over big M. Why would we want to use these equations? Well, these are both helpful when you're trying to identify a gas because both density and molar mass are specific to the gas, the identity of the gas. So let's look at a few examples and talk about how to decide again. It says, what is the density of a gas at 1.66 atmospheres of pressure and a temperature of 10 degrees if it has a molar mass of 26 point grams per mole? So I'm going to write down everything I have. I'm being asked for density. I'm being given pressure of 1.66. I'm being given a temperature of 10 degrees. So that's really 283 Kelvin. And I'm being told the molar mass is 26 grams per mole. So when I'm trying to find the correct equation for this, I've got D, P, T, and M, and I only have one equation that includes D in it, and that is M equals DRT over P. So I'm going to go ahead and plug into this. I've got 26 equals X. R depends on my pressure, it's still in atmospheres, so this is going to be 0.0821. My temperature I changed to 283. And my pressure is 1.66. So how do I solve for this one? Well, I need to get D all by itself. And some of you maybe like to rearrange before you plug the numbers in. I usually plug the numbers in first. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the 1.66. So 1.66 times 26 equals x times 0.0821 times 283. And these have now canceled out. And then I have to divide by the 0.0821 times the 283 on each side. And then finally, I could solve for x. And I'm coming up with a density of 1.86. And what's my label going to be? Well, remember, density is mass over volume. And the mass is given in grams and the volume in liters. So my correct unit would be grams per liter. Here's an example for you to try. 
What's the molar mass of a gas that has a mass of 0.562 grams, a volume of 0.855, pressure of 1.06, and a temperature of 10? So I'd encourage you to pause this, write down everything you know, and see if you can check, uh, see if you can choose the correct equation and find your correct solution. So I've got capital M molar mass, and that's what I'm being asked to find. I've got little m. 0.562 grams. I know it's a little confusing having big and little m. I have volume 0.855 liters. I have pressure 1.06 atmospheres. If you want to, you could go ahead and write down that R will have to be 0.0821 since that was in atmospheres. And my temperature is 10 degrees or 283 Kelvin. So what's the only equation I have that fits all of this? Well, since density is not a part of this one, I would use big M equals little m r t over PV. So when I plug in, big M is what I want to find, so that's going to be nice, no rearranging. 0.562 times 0.0821 times 283 divided by 1.06 times 0.855. So my final value for molar mass is 14.4, carrying just the three sig figs, and since it's molar mass, this is going to be grams per mole. One more for you to try, and again, I would encourage you to pause, see if you can identify all your variables, and choose the correct equation, and solve for the unknown. So pressure is, what is the pressure? That's what I'm being asked for. 2.5 moles, that's N, of a gas that has a volume of 5.86 liters and a temperature of 65.5 degrees, which is really 338.5. So PVNT, I can just use my straight up ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, P is what I want, I have V at 5.86, N is 2.5, R is going to be 0 0.0821 because I'm still using atmospheres. Temperature is 338.5, so this one's going to be pretty easy to solve for. I just have to move the V over, divide both sides by the 5.86, and pressure is going to be equal to 11.9, and that is going to be in atmospheres.